All right, everybody. I believe we're getting into the uh, the final act of the of the day. Um, I know everybody's had a lot of travel, a lot of long sessions, a lot of talking. Hopefully, everybody's meeting some people, maybe making some business relationships. I know that Cefesta has been a big part of that for us here at Sam Service. So, you never know when a conversation in a hallway can turn into a really healthy relationship long down the road. So, always be mindful of the hands that you're taking, the people that you're talking to. Um, so Fest is a really good thing when it comes to that. But what I want to do now is introduce um, John Moorhead. John is one of the owners at Sam Service. Um, Sam, for those who don't know, stands for Scott Allegood Moorhead. Those are uh, those are three guys that got together in a in a Sunday school class one morning and decided to start a service company. Um, there's a whole lot more to it than that, but that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. John is a uh, he's an attorney. Um, he dressed down today so that you couldn't guess that, um, but, but he is an attorney. John's also a good friend of mine, so what that means is that I don't just call him for contracts anymore. I also call him when I go to jail, and he gets me out. <laughs> but um, John, John is a mentor of mine. He's a, he's a good dude. He's very passionate and fun, and, uh, and you guys just enjoy. He's going to tell you about uh, something that's very near and dear to Sam's heart. Hello, Sofessa! All right. Uh, you know, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you have superheroes who are, uh, you know, desk clerks by day, superhero by night. I am a Sam Service leadership team member by wee early morning hours and then an attorney by day. So, so that makes me the opposite of a superhero, okay? I've got my, my times messed up. I have never spoken at a business seminar before. I've given legal seminars before, but I have attended tons of them, and I know two things to be true. One is, I am keenly aware that I am the last speaker of the day, and I am the only thing between you and your drink mixer. All right, so I will make it quick. All right, so I, I am aware of that. What, one, of, one of my core values in life, one of my aspirational goals, you know, we're not going to talk, core values are not aspirational goals. We'll get into that in just a minute. But one of my aspirational goals, which means I'm not quite there yet, but I want to be there, is that I want to have a keen grasp of the obvious. All right, so few people do. So few people realize what's right in front of them. But that's one of my aspirational goals. Today, however, I do realize I am it between you and dinner. The second thing I've learned at every seminar I've ever been to is no one has ever been mad that a speech went short. All right, so I intend to go less time than my allotted amount of time. All right. As with every, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. All right, I can't hear myself. I think my ears shut off. But with every great society, you know, we always start with art. Okay, art. So when we're thinking about art, there are some people, I, I would dare say that everybody in this room knows the difference between impressionistic art and realistic art. All right? I imagine there's a pretty good amount of people in this room who could point out the difference between a Van Gogh and a Degas, right? Sunflowers versus ballerinas. There's probably a few people in this room, not including me, who could point out the difference between a Monet and a Manet. There may even be a few people in this room who can't even differentiate between Michelangelo, the great master painter, and Michelangelo, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Okay? <laughs> but, but, everyone in this room knows when they look at a piece of art whether that person likes it or not. Every single person in this room, they might not know if it's a, a $5 million Rembrandt, a $100 million Warhol, I can't believe his sell for $100 million, but, or it might be a, a, a piece of sketch that some seven-year-old did. But they do know one thing, I like that piece of art, or I don't like that piece of art. Well, really the focus of my talk today is about corporate culture, all right? I bet very few, if none, other than Brent Sprinkle, in this room have ever taken a serious study of what corporate culture is. And I will admit that I haven't either, okay? I'm not an expert in corporate culture. However, like art, corporate culture is something that every single person in this room can look at a company and feel it and know if it has a good corporate culture or if it has a bad corporate culture. 
and I do have a lot of experience in that. So I want to talk about corporate culture and how you can affect your company's corporate culture. All right, so, so the, the first thing we've got to determine is what are the words that we're using? We're using corporate and culture. So culture is the most important of the two. So my definition of culture is one that I have, uh, have uh, taken from a sermon that I, I learned and listened to from my pastor, and that is culture are the things we believe and the things we do based on that belief. It's what it all is. It's what we believe, and it's what we do based on that belief. That is culture. Corporate means it's relating to, of, or being a part of a unified body of individuals. A unified body of individuals. That's what a corporation is. All right. So the first thing we got to know, I, I am, in fact, by day, a corporate attorney. So I know a lot about corporations. I don't know much about culture. I know a lot about corporations. Corporations are the same as people. In fact, the law in every state, except perhaps Louisiana, I don't know much about Louisiana law, but the law treats a corporation as if it is a person. All right? And when we think about it, all a corporation is, is it's a unified body of individuals. So companies can act like people, the company itself. They can, be, uh, they can be chaotic, they can be focused, they can be lazy, they can be hardworking, they can be good, they can be bad, they can do good things, they can commit crimes, they can do all these things that people can do. So when we think about a corporate culture, your culture of your business is just the sum of the people who make up that business individual cultures. All right, that's what it is. It's corporate culture. So it's important, and I think the biggest thing I hope that you take away from this speech today is that you go home with a mindset that this thing called corporate culture matters. This thing that called corporate culture is important, and it's something that I, as a leader of your organization, need to be looking at, need to be researching, and need to figure out how to affect it, to grow it, to culture it. Because I can tell you, here are the things you need to be thinking about. When you wake up, these are the tests. These are the factors, if you will, if you were talking in the court of law. If you wake up in the morning and you're happy to go to work, you think, man, there's no other place in the world I'd rather be going than getting in my car and driving to my job. You've got good corporate culture. That's a good thing. If you wake up in the morning and you think, man, whew, another day at the office. Got to go in. Got to get X, Y, Z done. Not looking forward to it. Just not where I want to be. You've got a bad corporate culture. If you wake up in the morning and you feel fulfilled, by the purpose in my individual life is being fulfilled in my work that I'm doing at my company. You've got a good corporate culture. If, if you wake up and you're thinking, my goodness, my talents, my education, my experience is just being completely wasted at the job that I'm working at. You've got a bad corporate culture. A good corporate culture is going to draw those things out of people and use it. You know, so these are the things you need to be thinking about. If you wake up in the morning and you think, hey, I am part of something bigger than me, my company. It is better than me individually. It's bigger than me individually. Then you've got good corporate culture. If you think, hey, I'm the best thing that, that company's got and there ain't nothing that can touch it, then you, you, you might not have good corporate culture, okay? So these are the kinds of things that you need to be self-analyzing. I mean, is am I working somewhere that I enjoy? Am I fulfilled? And do I feel like I'm part of something bigger? Those are the questions you need to start thinking through your mind. If the answer to those things are no, then you need to do some serious work. If the answer to those things, like Brent said, are yes, then perhaps you've got good corporate culture. And if you haven't been focusing on it, then you need to focus on it and figure out why your corporate culture is good, write it down, and then make sure that it's preserved and protected. Okay? So... That's the setup, and what I want to do now is just simply run you through 
SAM services, core values, and how we developed them, why we developed them, and so that you can have a real world example of, okay, well here's how this group of people sat down, figured this out on their own, with the help of Brent, but, but basically, we, we figured it out. You are going to have to figure it out. I can't tell you what your culture is. I can't tell you what your core values are. You've got to figure it out. So when developing, core, when developing corporate culture, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to figure out who you are. Who are we as a group of unified individuals? Who, do we, who are we? Not who do we want to be. It's who are we and is that good? All right. So the exercise that you go through to determine who you are are your core values. And I'm not going to repeat a lot of what Brent said because he did an excellent job on it. And he is an expert on it, whereas I'm not. But the point is that this is the starting point right here. You've got to start here. If you don't know who you are, you're not going to be able to do anything right. And you're not going to enjoy it. And you're not going to you know, be productive and be fulfilled, be self-actualized. I mean, those things are important to people. So here's our core values. And I'm going to explain to you the, the, the thought pattern behind them right quick. And then we're going to go have fun, OK? So one of the, the initial thoughts that we went through was a recognition that corporate core values is the aggregation of individual core values. So in other words, if we have individuals in our company that are so radically different in their own individual core values, then they're not going to fit into the culture that we've developed. They're just not. Does that mean they're evil and terrible people? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. What it means, though, is that they don't fit here. That doesn't mean they don't fit there. They can fit there, and that's okay. You know, we have this kind of mindset that we've got to make a space for every single human being in the entire world right here in the thing that we control, and that's not true. You've got to figure out who you are, and you've got to find people who believe in the same things you believe, all right? I mean, that's just what you've got to do. All right, so recognizing that, you'll see at the very top, we drafted our core values in a way that both recognizes that we expect the individuals, so we expect the company, Sam Service, and I, the individual. So it's joint. You don't necessarily have to do this, but this is why we chose to do it. And that's in recognition of the fact that we're looking looking for people who individually on their own meet these kind of criteria so that in the aggregate, Sam Service will meet those criteria. All right, so that's kind of the mindset. So number one, Sam Service and I execute quality work. All right, so here's what we were thinking about on this. Execute is an action verb. It, is, it, it means you are doing something. You are active. You are producing a result through the use of your hands, through the use of your mind. It shows activity, energy. All right? Quality. Quality meaning that it is whatever is done is done at a level that is not only acceptable, but it's at the best level of quality in which the company and the individual can perform. And then work. Work is the result of a person or a company. It's the result of its labors. That's work. All right, so that means that there's some activity has occurred and that labor has produced a product, in our case, a lot of times a service, and that thing, that product, that service is the work. We, on our company, happen to believe that God made man, in the, in the general sense, male and female, to be workers. That it, work is good. That people crave work. And so we believe that executing quality work is something that is a higher calling than simply uh, just saying, do a good job. I mean, it is a duty. We believe that that is a duty. All right, our second core value. We, Sam Service and I earn trust through clear and candid communication. All right, so everybody knows what trust is. Trust is when one person or one entity puts faith into another person or another entity to believe what they are saying or to believe what they are doing. All right, so that's, that's trust. And the way we particularly earn trust is we, we believe that trust is best earned 
since it's based on honesty through clear and candid communication. So it is not uncommon, or in other words, it is common that when someone within our company has a problem or an issue with way, the way something is being handled or the way something is being processed or with someone else, we encourage an open dialogue, a candid dialogue about that, as opposed to letting things just sit there and stew and stew and stew until things erupt. That's the candid part. We, we want to be candid. How does that relate to outsiders? We, we, to customers, to manufacturers, to other companies in which we work with, we want our things that we say and the things that we do to be honest and candid with them. And so if in a customer relationship standpoint, if we do something wrong, which we do, everybody in this room does things wrong, we identify it and we're candid with them. We have made a mistake, customer but here is what we are intend to do to fix it. All right. So we're candid with each other. We're candid with the outside world. That's very important to us. And we're clear. We don't beat around the bush and dance around things so that people walk away from meetings not really knowing what in the world they just did for 15 minutes. I mean, we get to it. We're clear about it and we're candid about it. Um, and I have to admit, people who come from a culture of not being clear and candid, when they come into our company culture, they're like, whoa! Hey, I didn't really, nobody's ever told me what they really thought about me. Well, you're going to get to know about yourself when you come to work for us. Alright, so, uh, anyway, number three, Sam Service and I know our limitations. We got that straight from Dirty Harry. Okay, to be honest, I mean, you know, you remember, our, e man's got to know his limitations. You know what I'm saying? They blew the guy away. So, so they, uh, five shots or six shots, you know, do you feel lucky? But, but, but I mean, that real, literally was going through my mind when I came up with that. But, but the point is that um, it's true. It's true. Every person, every company has to know your limitations. Everybody has limitations. Your new hires obviously are going to have some severe limitations. Your old season guys are going to have limitations on, on perhaps, you know, you have a really great hot side guy who's starting to get into cold side stuff. He's going to have limitations. Your management staff is going to have limitations. There are going to be opportunities that arise that every one of you in this room know about has happened to you, opportunities are going to arise that you know you're not ready for. That's two years out. That's three more hires out. You've got to know your limitations and when you should do it and when you shouldn't do it and pull back. So that applies from the receptionist to the technician to the, to the finance department to the upper level management. Everybody's got to know their limitations and they got to respect their limitations. Now, that leads us into number four. We're all, Sam Service and I are always learning and growing. So we have a culture that fosters education. We love Cefesa because it offers so much opportunity to be educated and to, to go through training exercises. And we believe on an individual basis, we want our people to be better each year that they're at our company on an individual. We want them to be better in their personal lives. We want them to be better in their professional lives. And that will translate into our company being better as a place to work, personal, and as a place to, to make you know profit and money, professional. So that, we want people and we want our company to constantly be learning, constantly be growing. Learning, of course, is to acquire new skill. Growing is to be larger and better Better than you were previously. Growth. And finally, and, and to be quite honest, in my opinion, the most important of our core values is that Sam Service and I are, are joyful in our work. Once again, we use the word work because we believe that's a duty and we believe it's something that's good for us. And we believe that if you execute core values one through four, that you are going to have joy in what you do. And at the end of the day, when you think about it, you will spend more time at your job and with your coworkers than you will with your wife, your husband, your children. It needs to be similar in joy that like a family would be. And if you're going to work and you're spending the majority of your waking hours 
at a place where you can't stand, in a place that gives you no joy, no fulfillment, no sense of being something better than you are or being part of something larger than you are, then your culture's bad. And I'm speaking here to the leaders. You're the leaders of your organizations, all right? It's up to you to know, A, if you as a leader think you have a good corporate culture, and B, it's up to you as a leader to figure out if you believe the other members of your organization think you've got a good culture. Don't have blinders. This is something you need to figure out. And it's something that I'm telling you is so near and dear to just your existence as a human being. This goes beyond just being a worker. This gives you a sense of joy, fulfillment, self-actualization. If you want those things, you've got to get your core values right. And I'm by no means suggesting that these are everybody in the world's core values because they're not. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. My law firm has radically different core values. One of the core values in my law firm is to dress nice. So I dress nice a lot. But the uh, uh, out of respect, and it's out of respect for, for people. But my point is this. You're not going to hear anything today, I don't think, that you haven't already heard before. My hope is that you just start acting on it. Because if you want, if you want a better life for yourself and for your coworkers, if you want that better life to spill into your home life, I mean, how many of you go home after a hard day at work and it's just, you have a hard day at home because you can't get past your hard day at work? Think about who you are, figure out who you are, write down who you are, and hire people who you are, and fire people who you are, okay? Run your company, run your logistics, run your people on this, and your life will be so much better. That's it. If you got any, I'll be at the little social mixer thing, so if you have any questions, give me a, give me a shout. Thank you, Nick.